Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now, Special Edition. It's great to have you with us here on a special edition of 4 News Now. I'm Jordan Smith. It's been a soggy start to the weekend. Meteorologist Matt Gray is here now to tell us when we can trade out these showers for some sunshine, Matt. Oh, it has been a soggy start in many areas, and there is some good news. Number one, we are going to start to dry out here tonight. And number two is that we did not see nearly as much snow this morning as we saw the morning before, and we are going to be getting away from any snow in the forecast starting tonight and tomorrow. So you can see on our live radar that we have largely cleared out across the Columbia Basin. We really didn't get much at all today. Meanwhile, in North Idaho, some lighter showers overall, just much lighter activity than what we saw earlier this morning. Let's show you, though, where we are seeing some rain activity. So around the Deer Park area, all the way south towards Mead and Colbert, we're seeing some rain. Ford, Wellpinit into the Springdale area and around Loon Lake. We're also seeing some showers as well as some rain that's about to move between Colville and Chewila, and there's more showers for you folks in Newport and across the Idaho Panhandle. Everything's slowly moving from east to west with a slight northward uh, component of that track as well. Over the next few hours, things are going to calm down considerably, and if you're in central Washington, well, the sun's already out, and we may see some clearing in Spokane before our evening is up. Now, Sunday, looking a little nicer as far as wet weather, but dryness, uh, or I guess warmth, sorry, might be a different story. We'll talk about that coming up, Jordan. All right, Matt, thank you for that. Tonight, a Coeur d'Alene doctor is facing charges of sexual exploitation of a child and video voyeurism for allegedly hiding a camera in a staff bathroom at his medical office. Peter Choi is in studio tonight with the details. Dr. Spencer Greendike, a 68-year-old doctor in Kootenai County, turned himself in Friday night. This began on March 21st when an employee at his medical office called Coeur d'Alene Police Department, saying Greendike had a hidden camera in the staff bathroom, showing victims getting undressed. That employee told police this footage was stored on digital storage devices at Greendike's office. Because of the concerning nature of the videos, detectives got a search warrant for Green Dyke's office and his home, where they found more evidence. On Friday, detectives obtained a arrest warrant for Green Dyke, who turned himself in to the Kootenai County Public Safety Building at 4.30 p.m. Now, Green Dyke faces two felony counts of sexual exploitation of a child and six felony counts of video voyeurism. The warrant had a bond of $1.5 million. In studio tonight, Peter Choi, 4 News Now. All right, Peter, thank you for that. A long-lasting construction project on Bigelow Gulch Road is now in its final phase this week. The newest road closure hasn't been easy for people living in the area. They say that they're not getting mail and it could impact their businesses again. Tonight, Bigelow Gulch Road from Havana Street to Wiley Road is closed. The construction noise seems to return every spring for Jeff Deering. He owns a business on Wiley Avenue. And his major concern right now, less customer flow because of the road closure during the peak season. First year we lost a lot of money uh, if I compared it to the year prior for our busy season. And Deering does think the construction is necessary for safety. The detour begins at Francis and Market Streets and ends at Argon, east of Bigelow Gulch Road. The construction is expected to be done in late fall in November. On Monday, we told you about a retirement community dealing with car break-ins and thefts. People living in the area told us that they were taking matters into their own hands, patrolling around late at night. While you might not think much happens after you experience a crime like a break-in and report it to Crime Check, the Sheriff's Office says every report makes a difference. Since our reporting, the Sheriff's Office has taken notice and started patrolling the area in the evenings after our story aired. We received a call from residents that law enforcement had started patrolling at night and delivered this surveillance trailer. Well, this thing showed up. That should help a little bit. The police were patrolling the area night before last and a little bit last night. And we're working to help you get to the bottom of things. So if you're ever searching for answers to a problem here in the community, please reach out and let us know. We'd love to cover it. A repeat offender is arrested again for indecent exposure in Spokane Valley. The sheriff's office says that Julian Cuthbert was arrested yesterday morning in front of a hardware store in East Sprague. 
Deputies say a motorist called in a man touching himself inappropriately at the bus stop. The responding deputy learned Cutford had been convicted of similar charges in the past. In court on Friday, it was revealed that he had 41 prior adult convictions and failed to appear in court 23 times. A judge set his bond at $5,000 and he will be arraigned on the latest charge on April 16th. Well, it's that time of the year again. It's tax filing season and a local organization, Latinos in Spokane, held a community event to help people who need help filing their taxes. The tax assistance was for any families who earn $60,000 or less in income. Translation services are also available at the event. This is the last workshop and then we are here to help the community to for tax prepare. Um, everything is free. And if you missed the workshop today, you can still walk in and get resources at the office on Monroe Street. Well, the countdown to the solar eclipse is on. See how schools across the country are gearing up for the nation's biggest celestial event. And we are going to talk more about the weather here for that solar eclipse. As for tonight, temperatures will be down into the middle 30s in most places. One difference here is that, well, basically no chance for snow tonight as we will see a drying trend and a warming trend as well in your extended forecast. We'll show you how warm it could get this coming week. Download the KXLY Plus app on your connected TV. Diamonds and Dreams is proudly sponsored by Dave Smith Chevrolet in Kellogg, Idaho. A lot of my friends were overdosing and we didn't know why. And like little we knew it was fentanyl. Last year I got caught up and went to prison. I really think addiction is a disease because it gets in your head. Every day is hard, but I have good strength. Other people give me strength by being there for me, not judging me. One word can change the story. My word is strength. Salon Pass Lidocaine Flex, a super thin, flexible patch with maximum OTC strength lidocaine that contours to the body to relieve pain right where it hurts. And did we mention it really, really sticks? Salon Pass, it's good medicine. He sent me to. You work hard for your money, and now you can get money back on state taxes you already paid with the Washington State Working Families Tax Credit. Visit workingfamiliescredit.wa.gov. This is internet that's not just fast. This is like hold on to your eyeballs fast. Now with double the speed for the same price, only $19.99 a month. The fastest ever. Fast at the speed of last minute recipes, series finales, teenage gossip, and destroying these guys for the win. Do it all, all at once, fast. Heart Royal Flush Tour 2024. December 5th, Spokane Arena. A journey through the hits and timeless classics. The iconic band returns with special guest, Cheap Trick. It's on sale now at heart-music.com. Heart with Cheap Trick, live. Produced by AEG Presents. Fred Meyer always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Fred Meyer app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Welcome back. A look now at how our nation's schools are preparing students for the big celestial spectacle happening on Monday. ABC's M. Nguyen says that there are so many different plans out there when it comes to watching this eclipse. 
This morning, Eclipse-a-Palooza. As excitement is building up, kids across the nation are counting down to Monday's once-in-a-generation solar spectacle. Thousands of schools preparing millions of students for the celestial event. It's going to be really dark. For students in the path of totality from Texas to New Hampshire, it could mean early dismissal or a day off from school. In Illinois, 60 schools will be closed so students can get the full experience. A total solar eclipse is one of those events that you know, people really should try to enjoy. In Rochester, New York, K through second graders spent a day creating eclipse themed crafts and learning about how the moon will block the light from the sun for about three minutes. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a watch party for the community's young stargazers and their parents. We're going to get some solar eclipse inspired little snacks, astronaut food. But Claire Pro, the director of Southside Kids, has a few concerns. A lot of kids get scared, um, you know, of, of when it gets dark and when things happen. So we have glasses for the kids to look. We're getting extra protections. That concern echoed by parents in dozens of school districts like in Livingston, New Jersey. The they superintendent the warning about one, two, children three, being one, tempted two. to look up directly at the sun without protective eyewear. Still in New York, the largest school district in the country will not be handing out Eclipse glasses despite early dismissal. Well, I think if you plan on watching that solar eclipse, which we all should do our best, absolutely, that protective eyewear is a must for mm -hmm. this sort of thing. But Matt, I mean, the, the they're in a lot of stores and they're only like two bucks. Absolutely. So yeah. if this is something that you're like, if you're into it and you want to check it out, hey, it, it ain't going to cost you that much. Right. And you never know when the next one could be. It's pro likely going to be a long time if I if I remember correctly. So right. even a partial eclipse. Hey, it's pretty fun. So let's talk about what we could see out of this thing here in the inland northwest here on Monday. Uh, this is going to be kind of at the most coverage of the sun in our area at about 23% of the sun covered. At around 1130 in the morning, the path of totality where they're going to see the full show all the way over here from San Antonio through places like Cleveland, Buffalo, and even up into Vermont. So pretty far away, we likely won't notice a whole lot here as you go about your day, just maybe some weird shadows, but it should be quite interesting if the weather cooperates. And that is the issue, isn't it? And always is. Well, Monday, our cloud coverage for the day expected to hover around 60%. Almost makes you wish it was on Tuesday so we could cooperate with us there. But there may be a window based on what we're looking at in our simulated uh, cloud models and things like that to where it may not be all bad news when it comes to that solar eclipse and for you to see it. Now, the reason why we're so cloudy is, well, we just had this big storm system push through to our south and there's still some moisture coming in behind it. And that's why we've had the wet weather and the snowy weather over the past couple of days as we've seen much cooler air come in with it as well. Showers around the region right now will be largely wrapped up by the time we get to around 10 o'clock. Would not be surprised if we saw some patchy fog in the morning and we'll see one or two showers across north central Idaho through the overnight hours. Now, this is about nine o'clock tomorrow morning as we go through your day on Sunday first before we talk about Monday. There will be some afternoon showers, say around the Blue Mountains, the Camas Prairie, and then in some of our northern valleys, we may see some uh, showers pop up along the side of the mountains. And then one or two might try to work their way into the valley areas. Overall, our rain chances are 20% or less, and you are likely to see a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon, which is more than we can say over the past few days around here. Now, this is Monday at about 11 in the morning. More clouds are going to be moving in across central Washington. We will see partly to mostly cloudy skies across north Idaho, but right in the metro and into the Palouse region, we may be just clear enough that as long as you put those eclipse glasses on, you might be able to at least get a good glimpse of the partial eclipse. But uh, right now, I would say that it's fairly touch and go if you're interested in seeing that event on Monday. We'll keep you updated as we get through tomorrow and take a look at the latest computer model runs. Clouds cool overall for the first couple days of the week. Not much rain coming up in your extended forecast. Highs will be near 60 in Moses Lake and Omac. We'll be in the low 50s in Spokane. We'll be in the low 50s and upper 40s across North Idaho. We got a warming trend though coming by Tuesday and Wednesday with more sunshine. We'll be up into the 60s above average and we're gonna be getting even warmer than that later on in the week. 
By Thursday, I expect us to peak at right around 70 degrees. And then a little cooling trend and a slight chance of rain to wrap up the week. But overall, next weekend looks a lot drier than this one did, Jordan. All right, Matt, we're all going to be looking forward to that for sure. And it might be a good time to start dusting off those fishing poles because the start of lake fishing season is right around the corner. So to prepare, Washington Fish and Wildlife are checking the lakes and making sure that they are stocked full of fish. In this week's Air Force Adventure, we're soaring above one fishing spot that will be perfect to catch some fish. Let's go for a ride on the Air Force drone over Badger Lake. We are at Badger Lake. We're doing a little bit of uh, reconnaissance sampling. Do this every year, mostly in my trout lakes, just to uh, get an idea of how our fish stocking uh, plan is coming together and to you know give an idea of what anglers can expect to catch on opening day which this year is April 27th. You know we're, we're mandated to provide a recreational opportunity and you know information is important so the anglers might be wanting to plan their opening day trip uh, there's a, a whole suite of lakes that are opening up they might want to know which lakes are going to be the best the best fishing with the, the best size of fish that they want to catch. Each lake will set three nets and then let them fish overnight. We'll come back in the morning, we'll collect the fish out of them and that allows us to uh, weigh them and measure them. By the length and weight we can tell if they're, if they're healthy, if, if they're getting enough food which may tell us we want to stock more or less. Um, it's, it's just a fine balance. Badger Lake is, is a really good one. We rehabbed it way back in 2015, and thus far it's been clean of, of any other species, so it allows us to implement stocking the way we would like. There's really good numbers and good sizes of, of rainbow trout, uh, West Lope cutthroat trout, and uh, I also stock kokanee in here. Boy, that looks like a beautiful place to blow off some steam and very stress-free. And that's important because April is National Stress Awareness Month. And while many of us don't need a reminder to be aware of our stress, it's a good time to focus on how to manage it. Psychologist Susan Albers with Cleveland Clinic says that you can take charge of how you cope, such as exercise can help calm your mind and body, as well as breathing exercises. What you eat is also helpful too. If you are chronically stressed, you can eat vitamin C rich foods to help mitigate some of the wear and tear that your body experiences from stress. Also, magnesium rich foods can be helpful. They help to regulate the stress hormones in your body and promote relaxation. Another way to relieve stress is make sure you're getting enough sleep between seven and nine hours every night. That'll help your body and it allows you to gear up and face the next day. Well, the Biden administration is preparing new proposals to reduce or cancel student loan debt for millions of borrowers who are experiencing hardship or who have seen their interest accrue over time. Sources say the Department of Education has begun working on this since the Supreme Court struck down Biden's original student loan forgiveness program nearly 10 months ago. President Biden could lay out these proposals on Monday and they could go into effect as early as fall. The Washington State Cougars hosted their first scrimmage of spring camp. Coming up in sports, our sports team, Julian Minnitzone and Alex Crescenti, are here to break it all down from Pullman. Don't want to miss it. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Don't settle for the screen. See it in your space. At Floor Trader, you'll find more samples and more selection in one place. This weekend at Floor Trader, all of Cortex waterproof, kid proof, and pet proof flooring comes with free basic install. My name is Leslie Gonzalez, and I had colon rectal cancer. I went to my family practice doctor and she misdiagnosed me. And that's when I contacted Summit Cancer Center. And it was different than night and day. The care, the compassion, the kindness. I believe if I wouldn't have come over to Summit that I probably wouldn't be here today. 
mental health was better, but uncontrollable movements called TD, tardive dyskinesia, started disrupting my day. TD felt embarrassing. I felt like disconnecting. I asked my doctor about treating my TD and learned about Ingresa. Ingresa is clinically proven for reducing TD. Most people saw results in just two weeks. People taking Ingresa can stay on most mental health meds. Only number one prescribed Ingresa has simple dosing for TD. Always one pill, once daily. Ingresa can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, behaviors, feelings, or have thoughts of suicide. Don't take Ingresa if you're allergic to its ingredients. Ingresa may cause serious side effects, including angioedema, potential heart rhythm problems, and abnormal movements. Report fevers, stiff muscles, or problems thinking as these may be life-threatening. Sleepiness is the most common side effect. Take control by asking your doctor about Ingresa. Ingresa. Fred Meyer always gives you more ways to save on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Fred Meyer app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. With a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. Discover more ways to save big every day. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Don't settle for the screen. See it in your space. At Floor Trader, you'll find more samples and more selection in one place. This weekend at Floor Trader, all of Cortex waterproof, kid-proof, and pet-proof flooring comes with free basic install. 4 News Now is brought to you by A to Z Rentals. Uh, week one of the football season is still a few months away. I know we got to get through summer, but for the Washington State Cougars, their season begins right now. WSU held its first scrimmage of spring this morning. Our sports director, Julian Minnesota, has the big takeaways from the offense, defense, and even special teams. Both sides of the ball had their moments in Washington State's first spring scrimmage. Quarterback John Matier ran with the ones and made some big time throws, but the defense made some big time plays as well, including those from defensive back Tyson Durant. And while there are positives on both offense and defense, there is still a lot that needs to be worked on before the spring is over. Through six practices, John's turned the ball over too much. And, I, you know, I'd say that kind of repeatedly if he was here too. we got to be better. Uh, I thought Zevi is very savvy. He's very pocket conscious. You know, he kind of threw a pick today as well. That's kind of his first to camp. So we'll see. I think operation-wise, I like where they're at mentally. It's really just focus on alignment, assignment, and, you know, just trying to do my job. You know, I was writing that down in my notebook as many times as I could. Just do my job, do my job, and eventually I feel like the ball will find you at that point. And the Crimson and Gray spring game is set for Saturday, April 27th, 3 o'clock, right back here at Giza Field. Reporting in Pullman, Julian Minnitzone, 4 News Now Sports. Well, thank you, Julian. Make sure that you stay warm out there. And staying in Pullman, after an eventful last few weeks, the men's basketball program finally has some stability. On Thursday, 35-year-old David Riley officially was introduced as the 20th head coach in team history. Now, Riley's a very familiar face to the Inland Northwest. He played his college ball over at Whitworth between 2007 and 2011, and then immediately began his coaching career at Eastern Washington, where he spent 13 seasons, three of which he was the head coach. But now, he steps into the highest profile job of his life in Pullman, taking over for a team that just made the NCAA tournament, and he's confident he can keep this momentum going. We have a very concept-based offense. We're going to allow these guys a ton of freedom within the structure of it. And as long as they're unselfish, because if you, if you give guys some structure and freedom and they've got a bunch of selfish dudes, it doesn't work. But if you have unselfish guys that buy into it, it's a beautiful thing. You know, our, our, our offensive system, we were top 10 in the country in assists. You know, we're top 50 in pace. We're going to move the ball. We're going to share it. We were number five in the country in two-point field goal percentage, right? We're, we're going to make sure that we take great shots. We're going to play together. And once they, once they kind of understand that, that structure, that's where they get that freedom to make reads and be creative and be themselves. And but Riley's going to have his work cut out for him, to say the very least. There's already more than 10 players that have announced their departure from the program, and that includes junior forward Jalen Wells. But 
He's not hitting the transfer portal. Instead, the former D2 All-American is testing the NBA waters with an option to return to campus next year. In his one season in Pullman, Wells was instrumental in the Cougs NCAA tournament run, putting up more than 12 points a game, and he shot better than 41% from three-point range. He, uh, we should also note that Cheney High School star Evan Stinson decommitted from the program today. He's following Kyle Smith to Stanford. Now, amidst all this basketball news, the baseball season is now upon us, and the Spokane Indians got their season off on the right note, beating the Vancouver Canadians 4-2 on opening night. Starting pitcher Chase Nolander was, went uh, five strong, given uh, without giving up a hit and striking out eight. Now the Indians will look to go 2-0 later this evening. First pitch coming up in just a few minutes from a Vista Stadium with 21-year-old Sean Sullivan getting the nod. For News Now, be right back. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Caulk, our high performance hybrid caulk with our new trigger flow nozzle. Flex Caulk is so easy to use. Just push the trigger and you get a perfect bead every time. And when you stop, it stops. There's no running, no dripping, and no mess. Plus, you can adjust the flow. Turn it down for pinpoint precision or crank it up for maximum coverage. Flex caulk dries fast and is easy to clean. And it also comes in clear. It's perfect for kitchen countertops, sinks and backsplashes. You can flex caulk indoors and outdoors. And the best part, you don't need a caulking gun. With flex caulk, you have complete control. This advanced hybrid formula is mildew resistant and totally waterproof. Caulk bathroom sinks, tubs, and showers. Or adjust the flow for clean long runs on baseboards or to fill large gaps and holes. Flex caulk is fully paintable and seals out the elements. Plus, it's UV resistant, so you can caulk and seal windows and all types of doors. Ordinary caulks, they shrink and become brittle, but flex caulk expands and contracts and stays completely flexible. Flex caulk is solvent free and virtually odorless, so it's safer for you and your family. Plus, it's portable. It won't shrink or crack and last for years. Flex caulk has incredible adhesion. It even works underwater. And with our snap and save cap, you can use it again and again. Forget those ordinary caulks and throw away that caulking gun. Get Flex Caulk with our new Trigger Flow Nozzle. When you download the Fred Meyer app, enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons and earn fuel points to save up to a dollar per gallon at the pump. You can always discover more ways to save big every day. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Take advantage of the tax credits you can, including the annual Washington State Working Families Tax Credit. You can get money back on state taxes already paid. Visit workingfamiliescredit.wa.gov. 4 News Now is brought to you by A to Z Rentals. All righty, folks. Well, some much more beautiful spring weather on its way. We should end up in the 60s by Tuesday. Good shot of hitting 70 later on in the week. And as far as our ability to partial eclipse, well, we'll see. We'll have another update for you tomorrow evening. Might have to, might have to t uh, hit the road a little bit just to get a better view of that, right? Yeah, it yeah. feels like a kind of Palouse-Whitman County area looks like the best shot for it. All right, all right. And if you do see it, send some photos. We'd love to see it. And remember, get those glasses. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now.